Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Santo Torsivia, who is an economist and our source for much of the market information that we publish. Santo, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Kemp. Good to talk to you. I need to start out by saying that we've been talking almost every day for the last 60 days or so. You're a speed dial button on my phone, and we've been putting together this annual report issue in May and just finished the commercial report issue in June. So we've been spending a lot of time together, and I appreciate you spending time with us today. And I appreciate my association with Floor Focus. You guys are very thoughtful, and you're very helpful to me, and we work very well together. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people realize these spreadsheets that we create have a lot of data, a lot of different points of information, and everything is linked together. So as we do interviews and people tell us what their numbers are, then we have to triangulate and make all of that work, and it makes for some interesting conversations. Let's just start real quick with the May issue. Most people have that now and have read it. We're showing that in 2014, the market grew to almost $20 billion, and that's the wholesale cost of flooring sold in the U.S., and that's up 3.8%, which, you know, after 13, which was a little over 7%, that's a little discouraging, right? Yes, it is. The economy kind of stuttered in 2014. In the early part of 2015, it carried over. I have, and a lot of economists agree, a bright optimistic future for the rest of the year and we're already seeing housing starts popping again so i'm hoping that things will turn around as we forecast that they would and 15 will be a much better year than 14. the wild card in all of this is housing and as you pointed out in previous interviews it's housing that took us down in this last recession that's one of the reasons that it's been slow to recover it's because it was part of the big cause of the downturn right Yeah, and housing, of course, is the second largest industry in the United States. And next to the auto industry, it's very important. Housing usually leads any recovery in the United States. And when one of your leading engines isn't pulling, it slows everything down. And then you get into the politics of administrations, economic policies. My personal opinion is they haven't been that great for the economy. But all that put together is we're having a dragged out recession. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you point out this automotive engine for the economy because, interestingly enough, it is fully recovered. If you look at the auto sales numbers of 2007 and compare them to what we're doing now, we're completely back to where we were. And housing, on the other end, is still a long way from recovering to that level. Like you say, we're seeing some good numbers here recently. But, you know, the call for 14 was is that housing would grow, you know, 25 to 30 percent, and it didn't do anywhere near that. It was single-digit growth. Correct. Yeah, it was very lackadaisical. Commercial, however, is coming back, and you start to see that starting to really kick in. That's going to be a big help. Yeah, great great segue. Our June issue is at the printer right now. Just a little sneak on that. We're calling that the commercial market in 14 grew 4.7%, almost 5%. It's over uh, 5, I think it's $5.4 billion is what the commercial market represents. But anyway, one of the things you want to talk about today is actually an interesting set of data points on the level of flooring sales that are imported especially with all this information that we see around onshoring and American companies making products here in the country. So tell us a little bit about what your research is showing. Well, over the last five years, in every category of floor covering, imports have grown. It's either close to or half of the floor covering consumption in every category except carpet. You know, ceramic, we're now up to 61% imports. Wood, is 48, laminate is 53, resilient is 51. Each one of them have grown from the low 40s, or in the case of wood, 37 to 48. I mean, these may change with some of the legal and manufacturing establishments going into the United States, for instance, with resilient. I suspect that that will slow down and reverse a trend there. And wood has a situation going on right now where Certain manufacturers from China have been hit with import duties of up to 18%. So that should slow down the engineered imports.
but it doesn't affect solids. So we should probably take ceramic out of this equation because ceramic has always been a highly imported product. But it is a shocker to see that, take for instance resilient flooring. If you look at 2010 and then 2014 in resilient, it was 43% import in 2010 and now 51%. And so, you know, we hear this information around all these LVT plants and sheet plants here in this country, and yet over half of what's sold in this country comes from another country. Yeah, and you've got a lot of private labels coming into the country, and you have the situation, and it's mostly on the tile side, much less on the sheet side. Of course, we have Tarkat in Canada that comes down, and that's considered an import, even though it's part of the North American NAFTA uh, situation. LVT is very heavily imported, and it, but I think, like I said, I think that's going to turn around uh, as, as uh, the new plants come onto, onto the scene. Well, let me just go through these numbers that show the level of import by category. So resilient, as I mentioned, is 51% imported. Laminates, 53% imported. Wood, very surprising, 48% in, imported. We talked about ceramic. I mean, that's been as high as 80% before the recession. It's gone down. We've built many plants in Tennessee, but it's still 61% imported. And then rugs, which is, you have a number that's both carpet and rugs, which probably dilutes that number a little bit, but it's 23% imported. So total flooring, and when you add it all up, 36% of what's consumed in this country comes from another country. That's correct. And that's up from 30% in 2010. And one of the things I think that's driving this, that gets lost sometimes, is all of the private labels that some of the major retailers are doing. You know, I've been talking about this for a long time. The retailers are starting to develop their own brands. And if you look at wood, you know, lumber liquidators, now that may change with some of the situation going on with lumber liquidators, but virtually everything they sell is private labeled. Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, loads of private labels, and so on. And I think a lot of that is being driven by those companies. Uh, they do do um, private labeling from domestic sources as well. But a lot of it comes from overseas, and a lot of that is China. You know, one of the things that your chart shows here that you've, you shared with me is that of that 36% that's being sold, that's imported, 41% of that comes from China. Exactly. And that's up from 33%, not just five years ago. So China has made a mark on uh, the U.S. flooring market, to be sure. You know, yeah. I don't want to be Captain Obvious, but China is a very big part of uh, the U.S. flooring industry. Now, let's make a point to, to point out that these numbers are 14 numbers. So uh, you're telling us that you expect this might level out or might even reverse a little bit based on all of the investments we've heard that are going on in this country, right? That's correct. And not to mention what the ITC has done in, within the wood category. I suspect, too, as new home construction accelerates, you're going to probably see more domestic production ramping up to meet the new housing needs because it's very difficult to run a program that is so time sensitive as the new housing industry is from imports. So 2014, in my estimation, might have been the high point for recent times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and just as we wrap this up, you do feel good about what's going to happen for the rest of this year? Yes, I do. All right, Santos, good to talk to you. Again, been talking to Santo Torsivia, an economist and partner here with us at Floor Focus, and you've been listening to Kemphar and floordelly.net.